Welcome back to part four of the list. That does not miss. I'm Mike Hogan. I'm just a cot. Let's start off with the, the ten new tag teams that fell miserably in the WWE. Number two, the new Blackjacks. So you got to do it like, you got to do it like Howard Finkel. The new Blackjacks. Yeah. Which were terrible Blackjacks. They were. Not every failed tag team sequel was the fault of the performer. Sometimes the timing just wasn't right. Such was the case with the next team on the list that does not miss. As they looked to follow in the footsteps of the rugged, rough and tumble tag team known as the Blackjacks. In the 70s, Blackjack Mulligan and Blackjack Lanza ran roughshod over the tag team division of both the AWA and the WWF. In the AWA, they were, ta they were managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan. Uh, cementing themselves as one of the most feared teams in sports entertainment history, the gimmick of two badass mo what? Must mustache is that dude. That's mustache. It's supposed to be mustache, but that's an eye in it. Why is there an eye in it? We anyway, mustached cowboys. They they misspelled that. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, worked in the 70s, but when the WWE tried to recreate the team in 1997, failed miserably. Yes, it did. The new Blackjacks, Blackjack Wyndham and Blackjack Bradshaw, you might recognize that name, matched the look and the gimmick of their predecessors, but failed to match the success. Even being related to the original Blackjacks didn't help, as Barry Wyndham is Mulligan's son, and Bradshaw is Blackjack Lenz's nephew. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Fans? No, not really. Fans were over cowboy gimmicks by 1997. Yeah, the smoking guns, remember? Yes. As they had been done to death in wrestling for decades. I think if they'd done the new blackjacks in the 80s, you know, since they were big in the cowboy, 70s, yeah. you do cowboys in the 80s, mm -hmm. the new blackjacks would have been fine. Yeah. But, 97, a little late for that kind of gimmick. Mm -hmm. Especially in a northern territory. Like yeah. WWF, I mean, yes, it was a global firm. Yes. Um, well, it's really not then. It wasn't really global. It was more. But the all Black Jacks, US, but the Black Jacks really would have been the smoking guns position, right? How would have worked? Well, of course, probably would work. Probably. But the smoking guns, they were you. They were they were mainly faces. Yes. And everybody loved them. Pew, 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 pew. They came out with those guns and oh, stuff yeah. like that. But with the Black Jacks, you know, of course, Black Jacks need to be heels. For their look and for their, you know, their characters and stuff like that. But 97 was just the wrong time for that. Yep. You know, maybe early 90s would have worked. Late yeah, 90s. Early 90s probably worked, yeah. Early 90s maybe it worked. I mean, look at Dirty Dick Slater and Mike Enos. It just doesn't work. Oh, Rough and Ready is yep. basically the same as the new Black Jacks. It is. It just doesn't work. You, I mean, the last, I mean, the most latest cowboy gimmick that actually did work was uh, Jimmy Wang Yang. Why does something like that work? But it worked! And that's not saying much. It's not saying much, but for a cruiserweight, his character worked. People did love Jimmy Wang Yang. Yeah. They love the Wang. <coughs> Pat, 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 Pat Patterson's thing was not next, so... Oh, that would have been a good way to transition. No, it would not have been. Oh, of no. course it would have been. No. But uh, next time, though, we'll have the number one new tag team that failed miserably in the WWE, and that is the New Rockers. You do the New, the new rockers. rockers, as it was Marty Jannetty and Leaf Cassidy. Awful. Yeah. Leaf Cassidy later on was Al Snow. It's like Marty Jannetty take with Marty Jannetty. It really was like Marty Jannetty teaming with Marty Jannetty. It was really yeah, creepy. It was like. Who's the Marty Jenny of that tag team? Both of them. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's got awful. Isn't it weird, though, that Al Snow actually looks better now he than he then. did then? Yeah. He's, like, in such better shape. He's got a, he's, he's, like, literally, like, as he's got, he's actually gotten better with age. His face looks better. His hair's better now. His, the, his body presentation, like, he's actually in the gym more yeah. than he was as Al Snow. It's like, dude, well, why, speaking why did of you put here, a lot looks, of work into it then? Who looks better now than they did then? Parker Holly. That's true. That dude is ripped nowadays. Yes. Which is weird. Because next on our 10 most unlikely main event acts in the WWE history, number five, Hardcore Holly here. 
until our truth who should be on this list, <laughs> and later Jinder Mahal came along, who will probably be on this list later on in years, no WWE wrestler had ever gone from zero to WWE title contender as quickly as Hardcore Holly. A noted backstage curmudgeon, I think I actually got that right. You got it right. Wow. Holly had been with the WWE for nine years. Wow. Nine years. Old spark plug. With old Thurman. Holly. You know? Before yeah. his first main event push. Before that, his career had been defined by questionable gimmicks. Hi there, Sparky Plug. <laughs> uh, multiple hardcore title reigns and 15, a 15, number. 15, 20, you know. Yeah. And a number of listless spot filler roles on the mid card. Thus, the idea of Holly as a potential WWE champion was a tough peel to swallow. The push was prompted by an incident in 2002 when Holly suffered a broken neck while wrestling Brock Lesnar. The injury enforced a 13 month spell on the sidelines before Holly eventually returned in November of 2003. No, 2003, <laughs> almost to 2013. 2003, with, with revenge on his mind, uh, he was angry. You break my neck, I break yours. <laughs> WWE turned the injury into a storyline, and Holly challenged for Lesnar's WWE Championship at the 2004 Royal Rumble. Remember that? I thought you said that. Yes. Well, unfortunately, he had been thrust into the spotlight with little to no build, and while the injury could have been the basis of a, for a solid angle, Hardcore couldn't get over there's not many times where the championship changes hand in a Royal Rumble anyway. No. It's a spot filler to lead up to WrestleMania. Yes. He fell back down the card as soon as he lost to Brock. Oh, it's Brock, so. Oh, it is Brock. Yeah. But, I mean, he did. He dropped down real quick back. Yes, but, so there you go. Okay, you're done. Get back down. Yes, here's a little taste of that main event money, and then we'll drop you back down to the mid-card money. We're sorry you broke your neck. Here's the shot. <laughs> Right. I get back where you belong. Exactly. But I mean he I mean you gotta give him his due. I mean he, he is a good worker. Yep. Um but I mean if you're there for like ten years <laughs> as nothing but a a mid card champion or a you know, a mid card jobber. Yeah. Yeah, it's just hard to just jump right into something like that. I mean Jinder Mahal, yes, has his transitioned very well. Yeah. Our truth did not transition very well, like we no. just talked about on this on this right here. Hardcore Holly's another one. It just it did not go well. Nope. And they just so. uh, they cut the string. You're done. Okay. Right. We gave you a shot, and that's all you get. Back to losing to people that are coming in debuting. But next time on oh, the gosh. list number four, Zeus. Zeus. What's his real name? Tiny less. Look at that. Look at you go. With his with his crawl shot. See it? See it? See it? What was the name of WCW? His name was Z Gangsta. Look at you go. <laughs> Since you remember that, you the WCW boy. So. Because they wanted to keep the Z in there, but they couldn't call him Z Man, you know, because of Tom Zink. Yeah. So he was Z Gangsta. And I'd be Z Pissed if they called me the Z Man. <laughs> Tom Zink loved it. They tried to like actually push that dude. Yeah, they did. Okay, Hardcore Holly. <laughs> They did try to push him. He did. Why? He's a former WWE guy. That's why. Who did he team up with in WWE? Who was that? It was uh, the Can Am Connection. Was, was that Rick Martell? Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm sorry, Rick. Yeah, Rick Martell deserved better. Rick Martell, Tom Zink, the Can Am Connection. So it was Can. So it was Can Am, and then Rick Martell jumped into Strike Force. Strike Force with Tito, 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 and yeah. then he turned on him and became and the model. He mm -hmm. never looked back. Because that was the best thing that ever happened to him. Yeah. A blindfold match with uh, old uh, Jake St. Roberts. Exactly, Indy Cat. That's true. Exactly. Oh, shut it up. Now we're going to jump back into the Screwjob Screw Survivor Series in Montreal. Last week we heard from Bret Hart's ex-wife. Mm -hmm. This week we're going to hear from Pat Passon. Because he was kept in the dark, so he has all the stories. Of course. And saying Screwjob and Pat Patterson in the same sentence is kind of scary. Oh, Lord. Yes. Okay. Mr. Pat Patterson, Screwjob in the same sentence. I'm just telling you, it just doesn't sound good. But yes, hopefully, hearing from the man, Pat Patterson, will provide with some 
perspective about this incident. And he was kept in the dark. Kept in the dark. So why would he have anything to say? I know. But Pat Patterson is known as being one of Vince McMahon's closest friends and confidants. Oh, Two wonder. peas in the pod. I wonder. Anyway. They know each other inside and out. Yes. It's gross. Um, you <laughs> might not know. I mean, this, hey, it's 2017 now. Do what you want. Um, you might not know. I mean, it was only like, what, 97 then. Yeah, so you're old. Yes. You might not know that he was kept out of the loop during the Montreal screw job. At least that is what he says. In an interview with Newsweek, he says that he was pissed off when he saw what happened to Brett on the night of the Montreal screw job. Since him and Brett were so close. So who's he? So close. The closest to Brett or closest to Vince? Thank you. So confusing, right? Who, pay, who signs your paychecks? Oh, uh, well. Not Brett the Bitter Heart. No. And not even Jack Tunney. Anyway. No. I really, <laughs> I really did not know, he says. This is a quote from the interview. Um, I was so mad when I found out. I grabbed my briefcase and I laughed about it. Get out of there! So I don't get punched in the face by Brett. I went to the hotel, had a couple of drinks, and I did it. ten. Yes. And I didn't know what to do. I thought I was going to quit the business. And yet you're still there now? I then had another cocktail. Which means three more. So he already had a couple. Now he had another cocktail. And he said, wait a minute. It's like I'm hiding. Well, that's... That's what we you're doing Montreal, for years. We're talking about the Montreal screw job or something personal else. Life, yeah, I know. You know? Um, Brett didn't believe Patterson when he told him he wasn't involved in the incident. This was due to Patterson's close relationship to Vince. If you're his closest confidant, yeah. confidant means confidentiality, people, you would think that Vince would have told his closest confidant because Patterson was the guy who was in charge. He was actually the booker guy. He right. was the one that put stuff together. Um... I went back to the arena, so he he had enough I hope time. He had a dri- I hope he had a driver because you'd be driving. And I mean, it was probably the hotel right across from. Now a lot of times you have a hotel right across from. So the he arena. stumbled across the street. Stumbled across the street. Back into the yeah. yes. So he went to the hotel bar, had some drinks, hid for a little while, many years. Um, then he came back, <laughs> came back to the arena, and everybody's still there by the time he got there. Went back to the arena, went right to Bret Hart, and I. And I get along so good. Oh, he and I got along, get along so good. Know, he's you in this drunk version of Pat Patterson. <laughs> right? I feel like Brett. Brett! <laughs> Brett! <laughs> Brett! I didn't know Brett. I didn't know a thing. Yeah. He and I get along so good, and I helped him in his career. I bet you did, buddy. <laughs> it was uh, so hard. Really? Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> For him to believe I did it. <laughs> Don't stop with that word. <laughs> Because of my friendship with Vince. For a couple... It's like a lover's quarrel here. Something. It's like a lover's trial. For a couple of years, he didn't speak to me. Well, that's pretty bitter, Brett. I would bump into him and say, Brett, all these years we were so close. I want him to shake my hand. Is that hand. what he said to All these years we were so close. I'm just trying to figure out, okay, if he was in WCW, Pat was in WWE, Mm-hmm. How did they bump into each other so much throughout the years? I guarantee you, they weren't in the same town every single night. Yeah, that's true. It's a little hard to, you know, divide up the wrestling community that much. Yeah, yeah. Come on, y'all. Uh, all these years we were so close, I wanted him to shake my hand. He finally did. He finally did it. Probably when y'all were both in the WWE. So. Probably when Brett came back to Hug do that Sean, whole thing yeah. with Hug and Sean. This will be a reoccurring theme throughout these stories. Vince wanting to leave people in the dark in order to keep their hands clean of the incident. Plus, also, you know, less people that know, the uh, better it is to keep it secret that it's all a big fake job. Ooh, there you go. Because people are really over, overreacting on certain things here. Brett was nervous and, and confused and upset. I got scared. I don't know what, <laughs> what attacked me. I Show my shirt. It might have been your shirt. <laughs> that was scurr. Uh, <laughs> lost my train of thought there for a minute. Oh yeah, Brett was nervous all day. He was nervous. He was scurred. And when Pat found it, he got his, mad. And his and attorney left. was just chilling at the arena with him. Yeah. Pat freaked out and left. He was hiding. And dr- hiding and drinking, they come back. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting, but the next time we do this, we'll get the point of the view from the referee, old Earl Hepner. Yes. Who's made a lot of money off the fact that, yeah, I screwed Brett. He literally got a shirt out of that. Um, 
which is interesting that TNA, our Glow Force, could sell that shirt. That's really weird. Really strange. I mean, if you, if they they uh, trademark that one, then I guess they're okay because they sure can't trend no more. Well, I mean, the shirt says, "Yeah, I screwed Brett." I mean, the fact that Brett's name's on that shirt, shouldn't he get money from that? I just don't say Brett Hart. It says I screwed Brett. That can mean anybody. It doesn't mean it's Brett. So. Come out. Come out. What you indicated? What you say? Maybe he likes. He has a boyfriend named Brett. Oh, Earl. Look at you. It's just. Nobody watches that anyway, so who cares if we had a shirt of Sasuke or Brett? It don't make no difference. That's true. We're from Frank Brown. That's right. <laughs> WCW true. never did capitalize on it. I'm telling you, that's something we should really get into is why Eric Bischoff did not capitalize on the fact that Brett was making so much money and they did nothing with him. Because mm -hmm. I was literally watching an interview the other day with, because uh, Stevie Ray has his own podcast with right. another guy it's called Stand Up for Greatness, um, which I don't know why they chose that name. Um, but he was talking about how when Brett came in, that they were traveling doing the house shows, and they put Brett and Stevie together as a tag team. Okay, two great tag team wrestlers, <laughs> but at that height of Brett Hart, why does he need to be in a tag team with Stevie Ray? He said that most of the time Brett wouldn't even know if he's part of the NWO or not, because they really didn't give him much inkling of what they were doing. You know, because when he first came in, it was kind of confusing. Yeah. And so he had no idea if he was part of the interview or not, which he never should have been, because if you really think about it, he should have been one of the greats along with DDP, Goldberg, Sting, and Flair that were fighting the NWO. Yeah. Brett... But you want everybody to be... No, we're not everybody. Brett was one of the biggest... Na and that's what it was, is you really think about it, Hogan was keeping a lot of his people closest to him. He didn't want to fight Savage, so he put Savage in the NWO. He doesn't want to fight Brett, put the Brett in the NWO. You see what I'm saying oh, there? I don't know. So... Makes sense, doesn't it? But yes. Brett should have never been... You could have capitalized him him being one of the biggest faces for your company, along with Sting and Flair, mm -hmm. and uh, Savage should have been with him. You know, DDP, Goldberg, see, he all face, He wouldn't have faced Goldberg and got, got kicked. Exactly. He wouldn't have been a heel, would he? Nope. Yeah, they just they dropped the ball on that. They really they did. got paid. I mean, got paid well, I he guess. He got paid but, very well. But yeah, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. None know? of it adds up because, I mean, it's like, if you really think about it, if it wasn't for the screw job, I don't think WWE would have turned the corner. No. Nope. Because it created, DX being even bigger, it created the Mr. McMahon character completely out of that one night because mm -hmm. you saw him get spat on, so you pushed back that fourth wall and were like, whoa. The commentator's getting spit on? What the commentator just called for the mail? You see what I'm saying? And then you got him being interviewed by Jim Ross, got a black guy, and he's like, yes, Mr. McMahon did this, blah, blah, blah. Which I, I think this was the first time that he was announced as the owner of the WWE. Right. So, you don't think that he thought that thing through? I know. What he's is, always wanted to be in the business. What does Eric Bischoff's book say? Controversy creates cash. But think about it. He's always wanted to be a wrestler in the business. So this gets him closer to being an actual character in yeah. wrestling instead of just a behind-the-scenes type person. So it's like it all points to, hey, we figured out a way to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. Brett gets to go have a lighter schedule and make tons more money while it helps WWE. And in the long run, Brett still makes a ton more money anyway because guess who won? WWE. Guess who put out more DVDs about Brett? Did he? So, yeah. clearly Brett didn't really lose in the situation. No, he did not. So, isn't that weird? But yeah, like I said, we'll do the referee next time, which, you know, he had to take orders from somebody. Or hot dirt. So, he said, ring the bell, ring the bell. He jumped out of there. I mean, that boy got the heck out of Dodge. They all did. Boy was running. It's on fence. Fence stood around. Fence stood around got spat on around. the face. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? I made sure the camera saw that. Because I'm sorry, if you're the owner of the company, why wouldn't you just put the camera on somebody else? Or end the paper, didn't you? End it right there. Before the controversy. It's like you wanted the controversy yeah, no. on the pay-per-view broadcast to put heat on Mr. McMahon. Right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. You wanted Brett to throw those... Because if uh, this ain't part of a script... That should Cut it off. That's dark. That's Kevin dark Duncan screen. said, "Go dark, go dark." 
throw the logo up, you're done. You're out of there. Yeah. Before we see Sean and them exit out, before we see the Marvels being destroyed, before we see Vince spit on. Exactly. Yeah. Because if y'all thought, if y'all thought the curtain call <laughs> of of Kevin and Triple H and Sean and Razor standing in the ring hugging, if that killed kayfabe, if you thought that was bad, which wasn't on TV, which was not on TV, it was only filmed by a random fan who got a camera past security. Yeah. Bad security. Um, so you're telling me that broke kayfabe, but yet, um, you know, showing really going way past that fourth wall, showing yeah. Vince getting spat on, showing Brett taking all the monitors and throwing them, showing Sean confused, like, what's going on? How did I win? What's happening? Showing the referee run out of the ring, not even raise anybody else's hand. That's breaking kayfabe. If, if that ain't set up, I don't know what is. Because you could just cut the camera, even before the referee got out of there, you know, Jim Ross could be like, Alright, ladies and gentlemen, your new champion is Shawn Michaels, and we'll see you tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. Boop! You're done. You're out of there. You get the heck out of Dodge. Because before Brett and them did all that to Vince, you could have the camera straight on Jim Ross at the commentary table yeah. and have him, you know, cut away. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, we're done here. You know, see you tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw and never show Brett spit on Vince. They they wanted you to see it. They're not going to show you something they didn't want you to see. Correct, sir. They wanted you to see it. It's they like a want, conspiracy. They want you to see it. You're going to see it. They don't want you to see it. You ain't going to see it. Exactly. Don't think they, oh, they forgot. No, 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 no. Now, this was the biggest work in wrestling history. It's kind of like, you know, when they did the whole... Uh, they had Sasha being interviewed, and then randomly, why would the revival walk from backstage? <laughs> yes. They they cut in the they cut in the camera. Why would they cut through through the backstage when there was a camera right there? They should have known not to be walking around there. Oh, guess what? It worked all into the Enzo and Cass storyline. They yeah. want you to see that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a random backstage hand walking around, which they would have no. never noticed that. Nope. It was two wrestlers, part of a storyline, mm -hmm. just like this. But anyway. That's it for this week, folks. Yes. But next time on Top of the we'll have our usual breaking news on Ringside News. Yes. Yes. Plus we'll do some uh, more pro wrestling review. The Monday Night Wars. It's heating up, guys. September to October something. Absolutely. The greatest of all time tag teams will continue on as we eliminate more off of the Magnificent Seven. Yes. We will finish up uh, the new Dude. tag teams that fell miserably in the WWE. The number one, the new Rockers. We may have some countdowns you to come back. Know. Never, never know. know. Countdowns, up, up, down, down. Never oh, know. Buy, sell, trade. Hey, the, the Hall of Fame Old, could yes. be, should be, want to be something. That's right. Yeah, we've got all kinds of stuff up our sleeves. That's right, Andy Cat. The 10 most unlikely main event acts in WWE history. Number four, Zeus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Zeus. With the Z on his head, yeah. Plus, we'll continue with the first round of bracket number two, the Cruiserweight 16 Tournament. 16 more matches of the Cruiserweight yes. Tournament. Plus, That's always. So much more. I mean, we may get more releases. Could be, yeah. Paige out the door. If she gets, uh, she gets uh, arrested for domestic <laughs> violence, she's gone. That's true. That's the third strike, you out. And you're done. <laughs> exactly. You ain't got to get, uh, get four strikes like um, America's nope. Got Talent. Nope. Only three. Only three, and you're done, Bill. So, and then she'll show up on uh, Global, Force. Global Force. And they start taping their next two Absolutely. months of shows. And you know what? Nobody will care. And be the Knockouts champion in between those tapings. <laughs> like right away, yeah. <laughs> so if her boyfriend can be World Champion, she'd be Knockout Champion. <laughs> and you know all they got to do is just take the eye out of Paige. Yeah. And she's still Paige. Yeah. She could use her real last name, which is Knight, Paige Knight. You're Sounds right. good to me. It does. You're working. So. The brain is going here. It is. So well, It's I'm happening gonna, soon. I want to thank you for watching this week. We'll see you next time right here at Top of Reality on episode 143. Woo. Thanks a lot. See you next week.